Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Kelly. Welcome to my channel. I want to thank everyone for subscribing and commenting. Doing that encourages YouTube to show my videos to more and more people. An ongoing study from researchers in Seattle, Washington and Atlanta, Georgia gives us some very important and I would say encouraging data points regarding COVID and natural immunity. I want to talk about that. But before I get to that, I want to make a point. Think about this. If you knew you were going to be in a car accident in the next few months, would you be more careful? Would you wear your seatbelt every trip you made and make those with you in the car do the same? Seatbelts are inconvenient and uncomfortable and your accident might only be a fender bender, but then it might be a rollover high-speed accident. A seatbelt might save your life or those of your loved ones. You may think that this is extreme, but I believe that there are only two types of people in the world. Those who have had COVID-19 and those who will get COVID-19. The genie's out of the bottle. It's extremely unlikely that the SARS-CoV-2 virus will go away. We continue to get new variants and COVID version 1.0. The old and sick mostly got seriously ill and died. With the Delta variant, it's the younger people. And it's possible that you could get sick and only have a mild case of COVID. Then you would have some natural immunity, which is, I think, a great thing. Then the next time you get it, it'll likely be a much milder case. I believe we'll all get COVID again, sooner or later. I don't want those that I care for to be the ones who are thrown from the proverbial car and die. I understand that distrust that many have for the way the pandemic is being handled, how big money seems to drive many of the decisions that the FDA and others make. But President Trump pushed for the vaccine development at warp speed, and I think most of us wanted a vaccine as quickly as possible. And that's what we got. I know that the vaccines were rushed to market and the pharmaceutical companies are going to make a killing on them, no pun intended, and the safety and efficacy studies are limited by the speed required to make them available. I get that, but I support their use. I was vaccinated and I would do it again. I want to encourage everyone who can to get one of the vaccines. No, it doesn't appear that they will give permanent immunity. But I believe they will boost your immunity enough that when you do get COVID-19, that you're much less likely to have a serious illness. And no, vaccines are not the only measure. They are just one of the things that we can do. But I think at this time, if you've not already had COVID, that vaccines are the most important thing you can do. Okay, those are my honest thoughts. Now on to the study. It's from Cell Reports Medicine at cell.com from July 20th of 2021. I'll put a link for the article below. If you have some understanding of cellular biology, I encourage you to download the PDF and read it. It's very interesting. The researchers at the locations in Georgia and Washington State evaluated the blood of 254 patients who were known COVID positive over a period of eight months, and they drew their blood at multiple times. And they plan to continue following them beyond two years. They wanted to evaluate the immune response of these patients and how their SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies changed over time. From blood samples, they analyzed the binding and neutralizing antibodies specific to SARS-CoV-2 as well as antigen specific B and T cells in order to understand what part of the virus was being reacted to. They also evaluated the antibodies that were present to common alpha and beta coronaviruses or cold viruses that we have pre-existing antibodies to. Here's what they reported. First, as you would expect, after the acute infection, there was a rapid rise in the IgM antibodies to the spike protein, the yellow line, and this quickly fell off. Then the spike IgG, the orange line, rises and remains fairly stable with gradual decrease over eight months. The neutralizing antibodies are the antibodies that have been shown to decrease the viral load and level of infection, and it's similar to the curve for the spike IgG. They also looked at the levels over time of the B cells, which are producing antibodies, and the T cells, which func function to enhance B cell response, what we call the T helper cells. 
and also the T killer cells that function to destroy infected cells. These T cells are, all, are also referred to as memory T cells and are programmed to respond immediately to a pathogen when it enters the body at a future date. They found that not only did these T cells react to the spike proteins, as we know occurs with the messenger RNA vaccines, but they also show reaction to other parts of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, including the envelope and membrane proteins, the nucleocapsid and the open reading frame peptides, the ORF, of different types. And lastly in this report, they found that infection with COVID leads to cross-stimulation of antibodies to other types of beta coronaviruses, including the original SARS-CoV-1 virus. I'm not showing the graphics, but they are present in the article, but I found it encouraging that the subjects had maintained a consistent level of antibodies to the garden variety coronaviruses, or coviruses, over the eight months of surveillance, which would indicate that there's some level of immunity was long-term and stable from previous infections and exposure. I hope this will end up being the case with SARS-CoV-2 virus. So many doctors have been wanting information on natural immunity from COVID infections, and this report provides useful and, and encouraging information. It's very detailed and interesting, and I encourage you to download and read it. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I wish all of you well. Bye.